Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend and a big thank you to my newest Patreon supporters, Brandon and Michael, greatly appreciate it. So first things first, we have Tesla vehicles spotted in a new Pepsi ad with Doja Cat. So in case you're not familiar, Doja Cat is a famous artist. She has 14.4 million followers on Instagram and people are now lobbying that she change her name to Dojo Cat, which I thought was pretty funny. But just one more reminder, if you make a great product in 2021, you can get away without doing much advertising on your own. Tesla's major strategy because the product will speak for itself and people share what they love, which is exactly what happens with Tesla and their free advertising from the end consumer. So free marketing for Tesla. Tesla in front of millions of eyeballs is always a great thing. This was trending on Reddit today. Now, yes, these images are old. It's of a Model S with a tilted screen, which you can see best in this image right here. But I'm only sharing it because we did talk about how there were some rumors floating around that this screen was not going to be able to tilt based on some speculation. But there is this image out there that some people may have missed. So I just want to level the playing field and say that that is still definitely a possibility possibility. If you have any insight, please let us know below. Elon gave us some new details when it comes to the new FSD Beta 10 that hit the streets over the weekend. There are plenty of videos uploaded over the weekend, and I will share a few of my favorite highlights at the end of this episode if you want to check those out. But first, Elon replied to a tweet from Frenchie, and he said, think of Beta 10 as enabling a significantly higher local maximum than Beta 9. Now for 8 out of 10 people, I would say they don't really understand what that means, and luckily we found an excellent explanation. I could sit here and try to explain it to you, but I want to give some credit to Space Pirate who shared a very helpful reply. Stick with me on this one because it should really help you understand the local maximum situation that Elon seems to talk about regularly. Your goal is to climb the tallest mountain in the world. However, you can only see a mile in front of yourself and you have no pre-existing knowledge. All you know is that you are going uphill, that's good, and if you're going downhill, that's bad. As you get to the top of the first hill, you see that there is a bigger mountain, which you name Mountain A, so even though going downhill is bad, you head down the hill towards the taller mountain. Then you eventually start going uphill again. But when you get to the peak of Mountain A, you see two new mountains, which you name B and C. They're both taller than this one. Worse, they're in different directions, so you have to pick one. So you head off in the direction of the taller one, Mountain C. Eventually, you get to the peak. It's obviously taller than the foothills we started from and both Mountain A and B. Surveying the world around you, no mountain is taller than Mountain C as far as the eye can see. Congratulations, you believe you found the tallest mountain in the world. However, just out of your sight, two miles past Mountain B, which you ignored, lies the real tallest mountain in the world. You failed because you did not search the entire problem space. You are at a local maximum, the tallest mountain you can see, but not the global maximum, the real tallest mountain. In self-driving, settling for Mountain C means things work great in California, but may kill people in Michigan. You can never search the entire problem space because there is no clearly defined goal like height in self-driving. Worse, problem complexity increases exponentially by the number of variables in the world, things like road geometry, hazards, weather, etc. So the best you can do is find the fastest computer you can, think of Dojo, and offline check as many mountains as you can, which is training the neural net, and then hope that your output, the FSD, does a slightly better job than a human driver. So back to the tweet one more time, think of beta 10 as enabling a significantly higher local maximum than beta 9. So thank you Space Pirate for that excellent analogy. Now this post why Tesla is struggling in Japan, I'm not at all arguing this is actually why they may be struggling in Japan or their sales aren't higher. I'm just showing you a perspective that should help you think about Tesla in different markets. The gist of the article, Teslas are too wide when it comes to how big they are. Reason number one, Japanese city parking lots as the models S, X, and Y aren't even a viable option for city dwellers and the Model 3 is barely cutting it. Problem number two, the streets. Japanese cities are not like most US cities. Basically, many of the streets have narrow roads with many bends that aren't optimal for cars to begin with. And problem number three, housing conditions, which many people still are struggling with here in America when it comes to a lot of people living 
living in apartments where there's no access to charging at home. And this user shared some images of their Model 3, and you can see this is one side and this is the other. So barely enough room to open the door here, and then here you have the street starting. So just something to remember for Tesla in other markets, especially when it comes to the Cybertruck, which is huge, and this should lead to a lot more optimism around the Model 2, the Model A, whatever you wanna call it for now, being that smaller vehicle where places like Japan and densely populated cities where that should be a very desirable vehicle. Galley from Hyperchange did a new monorail test with the FSD Beta 10 a few times and the latest video, once again, I'll show you the highlight at the end, but Elon replied saying, FSD 10 predicts height from video pixels directly without needing to classify groups of pixels into objects. In principle, even if a UFO crashed on the road right in front of you, it would still avoid the debris. Basically, he's saying without knowing what the object is, without needing to label it, they can still react to said object. Some work still needed to tune the sensitivity. Elon also says, we need to figure out how to render a voxel height of unknown objects in a way that isn't horrendous. Some of you may be wondering what in the world is voxel height? A volumetric pixel is a three-dimensional equivalent of a pixel and the tiniest distinguishable element of a 3D object. So when you hear voxel, think volumetric pixel, and this video infographic should help you to understand it conceptually. As you can see, we know what a pixel is. It's the smallest part of a 2D image, and a voxel is basically the same thing, but for a 3D image, the smallest distinguishable part of a 3D image. Simply put, Elon is saying Tesla is working on a solution to better render these unknown objects that have a volumetric and a height aspect to them to render them better so the car can interpret what they are and how to interact with them. There is quite the uproar going online today with regard to the new potential EV package that is going to be voted on. Hallmark's catalog said his mouth was on the floor that they expanded it to $4,500 for unions and reduced the American-made benefit to only $500. Previously, it was going to be $2,500, $2,500. People are saying the $2,500 for unions originally was already ridiculous, but to move it to $4,500 now, they are clearly targeting one company here. And he quoted Alex saying, new, even more corrupt plan will give subsidies for EVs sold through a dealership. And Elon joined the party here saying that this was written by Ford and UAW lobbyists as they make their electric car in Mexico. Not obvious how this serves American taxpayers. So quite literally, if this proposal passes, then the American taxpayers will be funding a vehicle made in Mexico. And Elon is saying he doesn't understand how this benefits the American taxpayer. I would quite frankly agree. Omar said, Americans should be the top priority. We need to be making the cars of the future here, not losing our auto industry to Mexico and China. Ding, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner. Just to be clear, the bill does also grant a $7,500 base consumer incentive for all new EVs sold in the US, and it would allow foreign made cars to claim that incentive for five years. And this bill is expected to be voted on by Tuesday. Elon shared that a digital clock will be coming in two weeks, this from September 11th, that would take us to September 25th, and then Elon was asked, what about waypoints and version 10.1, to which Elon said three weeks. That would be three weeks from September 11th, which would take us to the first few days of October. A pretty big update here on 10.1. Elon said with 10.1, it will creep forward with more confidence and quickly reverse back a little, just as a person would if it sees danger. So to my knowledge, this would be the first time that FSD would be able to pull a maneuver going in reverse. Elon chimed in on the valuation of the Tesla stock price and I think it's a really important point for everybody to keep in mind to encourage patience when it comes to Tesla stock price. He said to be fair investors are giving us significant credit for achieving self-driving given that Tesla's valuation to production is very high compared to other automakers. Now personally I actually think Elon is being far too bearish here with this tweet 
Maybe he's just trying to temper expectations with the stock price, but ultimately we all know that Tesla is not just an automaker that should be valued strictly on production numbers alone. It's honestly quite difficult to really get a beat on what Elon thinks the stock price should be. Not that it ultimately matters that much, it would just be one man's probably biased opinion, but at the same time, he goes from sharing Ark's article about $3,000 per share for Tesla, and then he has tweets like this where he's essentially saying investors are already giving us a ton of credit for saying that we've solved the full self-driving and that Tesla's valuation is high compared to other automakers. Well, it should be high compared to other automakers because like I just said, Tesla is not just an automaker. But I'll let you make of that what you will. Another big update here, a lot of people were thinking that FSD Beta 10 was going to be the single stack neural net, but seems to not be the case. Elon said the highway stack is still the production version as it is more polished than FSD for now. The single stack for all versions should release in 10-1, which once again, we should see in about three weeks sometime early October. Well, Mars was some great DD here as he found a LinkedIn employee for Tesla who was talking about enjoying their drive with the FSD beta 10, saying Tesla may have begun testing the FSD beta in Canada with select employees. But just to be clear, this isn't new. They have been testing here with employees since pretty much the beginning of FSD beta in the US. We just don't have anyone allowed to publicly talk about it on social media yet. So in case you didn't know that, there you have it. Elon's newest dog, Floki, has arrived. A pretty cute Shiba Inu dog that Elon did say a few months back, I think it was in June, that he was going to name Floki. A thread to watch in China, there are some rumblings going on that the administration there wants more consolidation in the EV industry, saying that there are too many separate EV players and that over time, they might be trying to stir up some incentives to encourage consolidation in that market. So something to watch moving forward. But to send you off on your Monday, like I said, I will show some of my favorite clips of the new FSD beta 10 from the weekend from different beta testers. To each and every one of you, thank you for putting the time in to make these videos and to add the commentary and to edit and upload. I can only imagine how much work it is, so I greatly appreciate all of you. Enjoy the clips. If you like the video, please take a second to like it. Hope you all have a wonderful day and a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. We're gonna start with a clip that I know for sure is going to divide people, just like my parking lot video did. And I'll let you be the judge on how the FSD beta does here. We're in Chinatown making a right turn at a red light with pretty low visibility and lots of pedestrians around. Did that biker just sail through that red light? Why yes, yes he did, and which is very common in San Francisco. Autopilot looks like it's ready to proceed as soon as those pedestrians are out of the way, but now has to wait for incoming traffic on the left hand side. And check it out creeping forward slowly while there are still approaching cars in view. Very nice, very nice. Looks like traffic is backing up on the right hand side and people are still using this crosswalk so autopilot stays put. See, and this is where it comes down to you. Like, I am actually pretty happy that we're not darting in right now and waiting for everything to kind of calm down, but I know there's so many people that want it to be more aggressive uh, and just go for it in situations like that. And now we have to deal with a car who is completely blocking our view to incoming traffic from the left. I guess this is a good time to remind you that my uh, 360 camera, the view you're seeing on top, uh, is mounted in about the same spot as the B-pillar cameras on the car. So what you're seeing as far as incoming traffic and views to the left and right should be pretty similar to what the car sees. Autopilot just can't catch a break. Uh, we now have a lane splitting motorcycle which is super close to us. I thought this might throw Autopilot for a loop, uh, but I actually think it does a great job at staying on track and being pretty smooth through here. And we now see some mild aggression with the creeping. Uh, Autopilot suddenly decides it has places to be. And despite seeing all of the approaching cars, it nudges its way in here. This was a 10 out of 10 right turn on red for me. I think everything about it was perfect. And I think it's starting to understand the pace of traffic more and more, which is so exciting. Oh, so now you can see when it's planning it. It keeps changing its mind though. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh my god. Let's go. Oh, it I, like, did it again. up because we got so <laughs> close to that thing. Turn this back on and yeah, it'll do a full circle around this roundabout, which is very cool. Hopefully it will do it right. <laughs> um, so we have a yield with no cars around. Wow. Right through the yield, exactly as you're supposed to do it. Really smooth through this circle. Wow, really fast. Like, a good fast, a good speed. Perfect. I could not have done it better myself. That is beautiful. Okay, so we have a left turn going into a neighborhood. We've done this on multiple other videos, and I've had some problems with it. We got into the left turn lane way too early. Um, yeah, way too early getting into that left turn lane. <laughs> that woman was looking at us like, oh, hello. Yeah, okay, and then, <laughs> okay, that was terrible. Um, the car realized, hey, wait a second, I'm not supposed to be in the left turn lane yet. And let's see, is it gonna do, look at that, this is good. Yeah, that left turn's really good. Okay, so the left turn's very goofy. I'm not, I'm not discounting that. That was wrong and, and bad, obviously. But man, that left turn into this neighborhood was so good. We've had a lot of problems with that left turn in the past where there's no cars at all. And my car just sits there. It's like it's like I'm here at the stop sign. <laughs> creep. Be yeah. a creep. Be a creep. A little further. Come okay, on, creep. You're good this way. Creep. Go. You're go. Good this way. You're go. Still good this way. Go. Still it's good. creeping. I want to see what it does. Okay. Holy crap! It did it. Wow. Where, where is it going? To the lane that Wee. it can see. <laughs> hey! It did it. Okay. Yeah, it was a little slower, but it did it. Who